insurance to replace their homes, but the cost of replacing it may be more than your coverage. And here with a closer look is certified financial planner David Ray. David, it's good to see you. We've seen you several times on our newscast before. This is kind of alarming. Is it true that the cost of replacing the home may not be the cost that you have for insuring it? It really is. This is a really good reminder to check in on your homeowner's insurance. A lot of people think, I bought it, check the box, I'm done. Some policies are for replacement cost of your home, and some policies are just going to be for a certain dollar amount. So that house that maybe is burning in Bel Air is probably going to cost a lot more to rebuild on a hill than maybe a flat house somewhere else. So you want to make sure you're adequately covered, or you're really going to be in for a world of hurt in some time like today. Right. Yeah. Uh, another part of this tragedy that we're dealing with is the yeah. number of people that are losing their yeah. homes. And from what I understand, the fact that there are so many people now that are going to be out of a home rebuilding, that could also affect the cost of rebuilding their house. It's kind of supply and demand. If we have a natural disaster and we have this amount of houses burning, there's going to only be so many contractors to go around, only so many adjusters to come out. It's going to slow down the process and really it's going to drive up the cost and you just want to be prepared because you might be out of your house for a year or two. I mean, even if you were just remodeling and plan to, the, plan to the minute, it's still going to take a long time to rebuild a house or build a house. If we go, oh my gosh, there's a fire, we have to get rid of the old house, we have to get money from insurance, there's just a lot of moving parts and it's just not a fun process in a difficult time. Wow, it is difficult. Talk about, so not only will people have lost their homes, mm -hmm. they'll also have lost a lot of their belongings, if not all of their belongings inside. Do they, if, would they have insurance that replaces the home and their belongings, or is that different? Kind of like the replacement cost. A lot of your insurance will have either a dollar amount or maybe a, they'll give you kind of like garage sale prices for what you're going to say. So picture your house is full of things. The average American house has 300,000 items. I can't pretend to imagine what all of those things are, but you're really going to have a lot of things that maybe you just bought a new iPhone or new laptop. Well, now it's used, and it's going to be worth pennies on the dollar. And depending on your insurance policy, you might get much less than it would cost to replace the iPhone. So you want to make sure you have adequate coverage for your stuff. Let's just call it stuff. That's the easy thing to remember. But you want to make sure that it's a big enough number to do, figure out what you have in your house. Because, again, the more expensive your stuff is, the more it's going to cost to replace. Well, that is uh, all just frightening yeah. to think about. But even more distressing are the folks who don't have insurance. So what do they do? If you don't have insurance, <laughs> you know, shame on you. I want to kind of slap your hand here. This is too big of a piece of your financial picture to not have homeowner's insurance. Luckily, mortgages generally require you to, to have insurance, but it's, it's sometimes easy to maybe forget to make that payment and all of a sudden something like this happens and you don't have coverage. If you don't have coverage, I mean, this is life-changing in a bad way. I mean, a very, very bad way. I mean, it's life-changing enough even with appropriate coverage, but you're just going to be you're just going to be out of luck. So, you know, take a step back, make sure you're paying your coverage, and if money's tight, look for a little bit higher deductible. There's some ways to drive down the cost, but still have appropriate coverage. Whip out your phone and document those 300,000 items that are in your house so that you can actually try and get them replaced when and if something like this happens. The world, we always hope that nothing like this happens, but it does sometimes. Well, yeah. you had just said it, David. So to document, to take yeah. pictures, should you try, if you are buying new things, should you take a receipt, snap of the receipt, or save that receipt, say you bought so it? new sofa that's a thousand dollars and you're like I don't want to get three hundred dollars for it I just bought it like is that would that help two steps there I would take a picture of it with your phone and save that somewhere out of your house save it to the office save it to the cloud so that let's be realistic if your house burns down we're seeing these houses here yeah. you're not going to find that receipt and what do you think is going to burn up <laughs> I hate to say it. that receipt's probably the first thing that burns so you want to take a picture of it or save it in some digital format so it's out of the house and if your house burns down you're still able to recover that information well this is a great reminder David that uh, a lot of folks are enduring tragedy right mm -hmm. now but most of us aren't, so this is an opportunity for us to really think about these things and to update our, you know, our policies. Yeah. That's the one good thing that can come out of this, is if you review your policies and make sure you have adequate coverage. David Ray, thank you so much for coming in yet again. Great seeing you here. Absolutely.